The History of Pigeon Creek Waterways have always drawn human development. From the beginning of time, humans have settled, farmed, and then built cities along the water. Evansville's location and prosperity throughout its history have been closely tied to the Ohio River and its tributary, Pigeon Creek. Pigeon Creek was first used by Native Americans, and later European settlers would also use these waters for transportation and commerce. Over time, the human impact on the river, and Pigeon Creek in particular, has transformed it from a clean, rock-bottom creek to the sewer of the city and back to a relatively clean waterway. Pigeon Creek begins in present-day southern Gibson County and runs 47 and a half miles until it feeds into the Ohio River. As Evansville grew, the creek provided a natural division for the city between east and west. Until 1884, the creek divided the unannexed portion of Lamasco, known as Independence, from Evansville. Historically, industry has flourished near the creek. This industry has had a significant impact on the creek over the years. The creek was basically unblemished until the year 1845, when the John Wright's sawmill was introduced. The introduction of the sawmill to the creek opened the gates for other industries to begin using the creek. Pigeon Creek was used as a source of energy as well as a dumping ground for the factory's excess materials. The buildup of sewage and trash over the years turned the creek into a pollution-infested blight. Soon enough, the creek became uninhabitable to many creatures and humans alike. In addition to the excess materials being dumped in the creek, Sewage was also drained into the creek for a number of years. By the 20th century, 13 businesses had begun to leave their mark on Pigeon Creek, including the Schmadel Packing Company. From 1890 to 1960, the Schmadel Packing Company contaminated the creek with pig carcasses and other non-essential materials. Another major contributor of pollution to the creek was the crematory. The crematory burned the city's garbage and then dumped the ashes into the creek. A few other industries that used the creek in a non-beneficial way were the Benjamin Bossy Furniture Company, the Armstrong Furniture Company, and the Evansville Lumber Company. And, you know, in the earliest 20th century, there was no Environmental Protection Agency, no EPA. So there were no national standards, or possibly even state standards, about how clean the water should be. And so if people dumped stuff, you know, it, it, it harmed them locally certainly, but if, if it could be swept down the stream, then it became someone else's problem. And because they didn't have national standards, then they didn't really worry about it. Because, you know, if it rained a lot and it cleaned the creek out, great, that's fine, it's not our problem anymore. Runoff from the farm fields to the north also posed a major threat to the creek. Silt and pesticides ran unchecked into the creek, contaminating it and making it muddier. Also, there were undoubtedly other forms of pollution, including petty littering acts. Along with the abuse of industry, there were multiple sewage pipes dumping straight into the creek, including sewage from Princeton, Elberfeld, Millersburg, and other Indiana cities. Since the mid-1800s, sewage was continuously dumped into the creek. One of the more interesting contributors of sewage to the creek was the Indiana State Hospital, which was home to many of the state's mental patients. In the early 1900s, citizens began to complain about the effects of the sewage on the creek. During the summer, an awful stench would arise from the creek due to the overwhelming sewage. Despite this public outcry, untreated sewage continued to dump into the creek until the 1970s. One of the first attempts to end the dumping of raw sewage into the creek came with the proposal of the Packing House Law of 1909. This law proposed that instead of dumping sewage into the creek, it should be dumped into the river. The health department, along with the mayor, fought this law desperately, arguing that dumping the sewage into the river damaged the community more than dumping it into the creek. Around 1914, an attempt to clean the creek was made by the West Side Businessmen's Association. Interestingly, the association abandoned their efforts after a couple of years due to a lack of progress. There was even a petition passed around the west side in 1920 asking the city to investigate the feasibility of running sewage into the creek, and still no action was taken. The signees stated that the creek was affecting the citizens' health. Other associations, such as the West Side Civic League, made efforts to clean the creek, 
but none were successful. It seems that any time an organization made any efforts to clean up the creek, they were put on hold. Despite citizen complaints and requests from multiple organizations to clean up the creek, very little progress was made. It wasn't until the 1970s when heavy conservation efforts began. A new generation of Americans called for reform in many areas, and this generation adopted many causes, including a rededication to the environment. This is the generation that brought revitalized interest in a clean Pigeon Creek. Finally, late into the year 1970, a campaign was planned to combat the pollution and flooding of Pigeon Creek. The campaign had gone basically unnoticed for some time until 900 individuals volunteered to help clean up the creek. Their actions showed the public support for the cleanup of the creek. The city could no longer ignore the people's demands. After 32 years of discussions, plans were made to build a levee and a flood wall running 15 miles along the creek to prevent flooding and pollution. The total cost of this project would be around $12.5 million. The campaign also began an extensive program to end pollution along the creek. It reinforced existing laws and created new laws against polluting the creek. Currently, Pigeon Creek is doing better than ever due to the relentless effort of Evansville citizens over a century and a half of time. Wesselman's Nature Center, along with other groups, do their best to keep the creek clean. The Nature Center also offers canoe trips down the creek. Uh, positively, I mean, it's used for a lot for recreation. I'd run the Canoe Evansville program here, so I get, you know, up to six or 700 people a year going on the creek with me, get to see a different side of Evansville, get to see some of the wildlife, see actually what the Pigeon Creek is up close. Um, there's also several other groups in the, around Evansville that do canoe or kayak, so they use the waterway as well. Um, and, and so we're using some recreation. I see a lot of people run into a lot of people who are fishing down there on the creek as we go down it. Um, you see a lot of limb lines where people are using it. People from the river float will come up in boats to fish. So it, it's getting used a lot for recreation, especially now that the health of it's improved a little bit or quite a bit. So people you know, are starting to realize that it's a useful waterway to have. The city funded a paved path along the creek. The creek, I think, has become recognized again for its value for the community. The event of the Greenway, people recognize the value of, of the creek. The creek provides a great watershed for southwestern Indiana, and it also provides a lot of wildlife uh, for community, for our community to, trans, uh, to move around throughout the country. It's just been uh, more people become more recognized and see the need that it needs to be improved, the water quality needs to be improved, um, and uh, we can utilize it as more of a, a, a recreational aspect for our community. The creek is in better health than it has been in the past century and is finally being used in positive ways. What started as an untouched natural creek and evolved into a dirty, polluted ditch has finally reverted back to a clean, usable waterway.